Good morning, guys. So far, I am pleasantly surprised and happy with uh, Maine's weather here. This is, uh, this is what I wanted so bad. I looked forward to this, the entire Lincoln Highway. So this is, this is pretty cool. What a nice day. Just a random marker here. Or is it random? This is the birthplace of Captain Hanson Gregory, who first invented the hole in the donut in the year 1847. Erected here because this is his birthplace. Apparently, he enjoyed eating blobs and blobs of fried dough while out at sea. Hard job being a sea captain. So what he decided to do was for easy access to those doughy treats was he impaled those blobs of dough on the handles, the uh, spikes of the steering wheel of the ship. And thus it was, you know, you could just pull it out and it had a hole in the middle. That's how the actual donut uh, came to be what it is today with that hole. That's why that hole exists was because of Captain Hanson Gregory, which is pretty good. That's how the standard donut as we know it today came to be because of that captain's novel idea. <laughs> kind of sounds like something Homer Simpson would actually do. Now it makes sense why Homer, the lazy nuclear power plant guy, loves donuts so much. And actually, I love donuts too. Will you want some coffee? Later? Okay. I'm not a Krispy Kreme fan, guys. Actually, my donut place has always been Dunkin' Donuts. And they're all over the country. A lot more of these than there are Krispy Kremes right now. And my favorite donut of choice. Does anybody know what my favorite donut is? Think Homer. Pink colored strawberry frosted sprinkled donuts. That's my go-to. Mmm, it's... You wouldn't like it. It's it's delicious. Okay, you, you want to smell? You can smell. No, don't lick it. Oh, cat lick. What did you find this time, Jax? Oh, you found the ocean. Yeah, here in... I think I'm in the city of Rockport, Maine now, I believe. And uh, we have some oceanfront property here. Hey, you be careful. There's no edge there, Jax. He's like, oh, you're right, Dad. You don't see this too often. There's about a mm, 20 foot drop with, well, no fence. So don't do it, Jax. It's not worth it. You want to go for a boat ride, Jax? Maybe we should trade the RV in for a boat. Well, I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud, man. If I were to blow the train horn right now, would that make you mad? <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. So yeah, what a neat little coastal community town. I want to look around a little bit. You and your picnic tables, man. You ain't right. You ain't wrong, but you know. What do you smell? Did a dirty dog pee right there? This is the Rockport Lime Kilns. This uh, structure that they have fenced off and preserved, pretty, it's pretty cool. Little diagram here talking about the railroad brought limestone calcium carbonate uh, from local quarries, which was dumped into the top of the kilns to form a charge. Yeah, Jax, this was a booming thing in 1859. Actually, it is quite preserved. There's another date up there that says 1984. I don't know why they would, maybe they preserved it or something. Ooh, a Vulcan steam locomotive. It's actually quite small. <laughs> it was brought here in 1982 to Rockport. Size isn't everything, guys. Just gotta get the job done. I think this is another kiln. Lime kiln. They got a bunch of them. Interesting. Huh. Andre the Seal. And he's just chilling there on a rock. Smiling. Mm-hmm. I have to say there, Andre, you've got uh, quite a view. Quite a view out there, buddy. There's a little plaque here that says Andre was born on Robinson's Rock in Penabost Bay on May 16th, 1961. Abandoned at birth, he was found, befriended, raised, and trained by Harry Coolridge of Rockport, Maine. Andre is honorary harbor master of Rockport Harbor and is a celebrity of more than local renown. His antics have delighted people far and wide. Andre is the harbor seal, only species that occurs regularly in New England waters. I compare you to a kiss from a rose on the gray. Oh, the more I get of you, strange as a feel. Yeah. <laughs> We're pretty lucky to have such beauty here in this country. 
little harbor here. You guys want to see this place from my drone's pr perspective? Let's drone the Atlantic Ocean here. Official guys, I have come to the nut house. <laughs> this is Floyd, the pink dinosaur, or as I'm gonna call Pink Floyd. <laughs> and I think he's a triceratops. Yeah, I think that's what he is. Okay, cool. Okay, and this is Nutsy the squirrel who has missing a nose. Poor guy. It must have been a really bad winter. Uh, they need to repair old Nutsy there. Alright guys, I'm gonna check into the nut house now. You knew it was coming. Oh, more magnets, of course. You, you, you're killing me, Smalls. At least they have their own magnet. Perry's Nuthouse, Belfast, Maine. That's cool. And here's an albatross. The largest wingspan of the entire bird kingdom, though only nine inches wide, its wings measure more than 11 feet from tip to tip. And wasn't I just saying I need to cool it on the magnets? <laughs> No. I'll, I'll remember this magnet as uh, having to do with Pink Floyd. How about this uh, work of art over here? That's the Penobscot Narrows Bridge with what appears to be an observatory up top. Might be a way up there. I'm actually going to go find that out, but uh, it's such a great day with no wind. Let's, let's get some aerial drone shots of this, see what we can come up with. Power boat out there. We're standing uh, underneath the Narrows Bridge now, and uh, they don't accommodate to RVs very well. Uh, kind of tough to maneuver. They don't provide any parking. I had to take up four spots, but she said it was okay. Um, but yeah, this is the one that we can go up into. I guess there's the elevator. So we're going all the way up to the top. Right, and there's the sun. Hi. <laughs> All right, see you on the way back down. <laughs> Got an elevator all to myself. Ooh. We are going up, like I said, 42 stories or 420 feet to the first deck. And there are, I guess, three decks of the observatory up there. Um, and she said it takes 50 seconds to get from the bottom all the way to the top of the observatory. Also, this is the only bridge observatory in this country. There are three others in Thailand, Japan, and Singapore, uh, but no other observatory bridge lookouts. This this will be fun. This is worth it now. Oh, oh ears are popping. And there we go. Hey there. Holy cow, so we've got to climb a few more stairs. Look at oh. my RV down there taking up three or four spots. Yep. Look at these views. It's amazing. I'll walk you guys around. Mm -hmm. Should we look down? Yeah, we should look down. 
get that water out there. Pemscott River. <laughs> okay, this is the, the, the rest of the bridge. The other tower on the other side over there, and the cars driving. Wonder if they can see us up there. No, they can't see us, because when I was parked over there, I couldn't see through these windows. Pretty cool. I just think it's fun to look down. <laughs> I gotta find a spot to boondock. We have to. Gotta find a spot to spend the night. So that's my uh, mission around here. Also, gotta find a Starbucks coffee shop somewhere to uh, check in with the world. You guys, I've been quiet. Well, I've been quiet because I don't have internet. <laughs> Aw, how much is that kitty in the window? Huh? How much is that kitty? How you doing? You about done driving? Riding, I mean? I've been doing all the driving. Yeah? Okay. I think we, I think we can live right here. This is going to be my stealth camping spot here. We're just inside Ellsworth, Maine, I think. And I'm in a commercial area with two businesses. Both are already closed for the evening. And so I don't know who owns, maybe they share the lot or something, but I do think it's gonna work for, for one night of just parking, you know? Parking can be tricky, and the cool part is, I have a view of the river. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, I'll be out first thing in the morning before these businesses even open. Um, you know, you gotta improvise when, when parking's tough. It's tricky, because in the summertime, well, the sun sets so much later that you can't just sneak in at 5 p.m. when it's already dark and stealth camp in places because you're going to be, I'm going to be seen till like 9 or 10 p.m. here. No, I'm stealthy. What are you talking about? I blend right in. Yeah. That's it for me, guys. Jackson, I'll see you in a couple days back from Maine. Bye, guys.